Good morning, Tom here again. Um, today, on this fine sunny morning, I'm going to be installing a My Energy Eddy into my Mixer G hot water tank. A um, little bit of background um, the My Energy Eddy uh, is what's called a solar diverter. Uh, so what this will do is it will take all the, the excess solar um, that my setup generates, which is which is here, um, and it will dump it into the hot water tank through the hot water element. Um, so the plan today is to install the eddy itself um, into the tank. Um, you can see the, the element up there. Um, to make this work with Mixergy, um, I can't just attach it directly because the Mixergy tank um, also controls the element, which is what I use for heating my water in the morning because um, I'm on off-peak um, electricity. So it works out about the same as using gas, but just no, lower CO2 emissions. Um, so what I've got to install today, in addition to the eddy, is I've got to install this PV switch. So this is provided by Mixergy. Um, and basically what this does is it lets the tank know when the eddy um, is performing um, sort of hot water diversion. So I've got a nice space on the wall here for it. So I'm probably gonna put the, the PV switch unit on this side, and then I'll put the, the eddy up here, um, checking the clearances to make sure it's all okay. I've uh, got everything I need, I think. So I've got my screwdrivers, um, snips, etc. Got my trusty dual drill, a couple of different drill bits and roll plugs. Um, and then I've got some uh, 2.5 square flex. Um, so this is heat resistant flex, um, which is recommended. It's got this, uh, you probably can't see that. Um, well, it's on there somewhere. Uh, yeah, the HO5 V2 V2, that's what's recommended. Um, Mixer you say to use uh, 1.5 square. I just went for something a bit bigger. Um, also, to start me off, I'm just going to use a normal three pin plug um, to power the eddy. Um, I can limit the output of the eddy to three kilowatts. I'll probably bring that down to two and a half, maybe just for a bit of margin. Um, and then I can basically plug it in um, until I get the electrician to add um, another spur up there for me um, permanently. But as it's such a beautiful day, I wanted to try and get that in and installed and see if I can't get some free, in inverted commas, hot water. Okay, so let's go. That's the PV diverter installed. Um, so I just used six mil drill bit, um, put the holes in, some red roll plugs, and then some five mil by 50 mil uh, screws. Um, it comes with these little spacers. So that put in, that just keeps it um, nice and square and away from the wall. And I think it also allows some airflow behind the unit, I guess, for these relays. Um, so you can see there's different blocks, uh, there's, oh, there's different blocks, there's different pump wires, bits and bobs. So I'll go through that when I'm um, wiring it up. And I'm going to install the eddy next. All right, so this is the eddy. Um, so to get the eddy up on the wall, first thing you need to do is take out the two screws and lift off the face plate. We'll put that back in the box for safekeeping. And then to loosen these two screws here. And this will take the control unit. Ah, if I get the right screwdriver. So we loosen these. 
then I feel like this should just pop up and then lift off and lift off. So that's the, geez, there's, a, there's quite a bit of heft in that. Um, and this is the bracket. So we just need to fix the bracket up. Probably put four screws in this. Um, and then it needs 20 mil clearance either side. And I think it's 150 at top and bottom. So I'll have, I'll have no problem um, fitting that up there. Um, and all the wiring comes out through the back. You can see there's some big clamps there, which take the cables for the heating supply. So that's the uh, the feed in, and that's the uh, the feed out. Um, I do have a relay board, uh, which does get installed somewhere in here, um, but I'm not going to do that today. I'll do that another day. Um, essentially, the relay board will let you uh, manage other loads. So I'm thinking about maybe putting my underfloor heating that's in the bathroom that's electric i could put that on here or potentially the um dual fuel towel rail i could also power that so that would mean i could use um sunlight during the day to dry any towels that are up on the rad um, but i'll cover that probably in a later video um so for now i'm gonna get this bracket up on the wall Okay, so I was just coming to look at taking out um, the cable here. So basically my plan was uh, use this junction box um, and take the cable down to the unit here. Um, and then replace this length of cable here and take the supply from, from the PV, PV switch up, up to the element. Um, but I can't actually get into this. <laughs> um, the screwdriver, a little screwdriver, well, the one I've got to hand doesn't fit, which is a real problem. Um, so I'm going to try and get, I don't really know what to do now. I'm gonna try and use a smaller screwdriver. See if I can't get in and, and open that. Um, obviously, I will isolate the the tank first um, before I open this. But this this is a this is a pain. Um, I can't get into that. Um, I'm going to have to basically use this cable. Unfortunately, it isn't long enough anyway to reach down there. Um, so I'll have to put some connectors on that, and then. I'll try and put it into a put it into a box. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna try a smaller screwdriver. Got in. With the help of this sort of weird right angle tool. Um, I've opened up the connector. So the plan now will be take a new cable from here down to there. Um, put a new cable in here, run it down to there, and then take the supply from the eddy into the switch. So I'm going to cut some cables and get these wired in now. Okay, so I've opened the cover for the thermostat, or the, the element rather, and you can see there's two thermostats installed. Um, so they act as basically cutoffs. So you can kind of see the live feed coming in here and that goes in there into that thermostat and then I guess that's the neutral or maybe that's the live so black is neutral and grey is live and that's another cutoff so they'll basically disconnect the power once the, the tank water has reached um, a certain temperature um, and they're basically designed as, as safety 
cutoffs, so I need to leave them in place. Um, so what I'll end up doing is removing this cable here, putting a new one in its place, um, and just making sure that all the various wiring is um, preserved. All right, uh, so I've kind of opened all this up and I'm having a think. Um, and I realized that actually this there's actually two heating elements on here. Um, and that's the reason why this is a, a dual supply. I guess I should have realized that. Um, so there's actually two independent heating elements on here. So what I think I'll do is rather than connect into this box or use this box, I'll disconnect the mixergy from this. Um, and then I'll basically put a box up there, run the mixer G connector in there, and then from there, take a cable down to the PV switch. Um, and that means then that I can leave this as is, and I can connect this box to the PV switch. I think that would be neater um, than trying to replace this cable. And it also means then that if I do need as a as a backup i don't i don't really know i mean it's a dual element um i don't yeah i thought originally i thought i think I, that i'd be able to connect the the eddy directly into this but with the need for the tank and then i don't know two elements pulling at the same time i i, di I didn't really know what way that would work um actually now that i hmm okay kind of trailed off there lost my own thoughts um i have to use the pv switch i, I can't connect the eddy directly to this and it's mainly due to the uh the destratification pump so i've got to connect those two things together so i'm going to stick with the plan i'll put a little junction box up here um take the mixer g control into the junction box use some waggle connectors connect that i run a cable down to the pv switch and then from the pv switch i run a cable back up here into this junction box and we should be good to go. All right, all wired in, I think. So, feed from the mixer G. That's going into the the M connections. Feed from the eddy. That goes into the like the P connections, and then that's up into the connection junction box, which goes into the immersion heater. So that's all connected. So last thing to do now is, is we've got to take um, the feed from the pump, which is this cable here. And that runs around the back of the tank up into the control unit up here. So we've got to take that, that gets plugged in there. And then this one, goes up into the control unit and then that allows this box to run the motor. Um, I've also got the connection going into the eddy um, and then once I've put the pump control cable in then I'll create another cable with a plug on it and plug that in over there and see if we can't get this thing diverting some of the solar. Um, it's been quite a good solar day too. Uh, I've had almost 12 kilowatt hours so far. All right. Right, that was a pain. Um, so the actual cable was in that little connector there on this side. And yeah, I had to reach around behind there. You probably can't see it, but there's like a wheel clip to get that off. But I've managed to get the blend. You can see the black cable coming up and into the PV switch. So all I need to do now is plug this in, this cable, and then run that round. And then we should have all the connections that we need. Wiring of the PV switch now is done. Got my cables coming to pump controllers. They're connected in. All right, admittedly, they should be, they should be behind that for tidiness, but um, I can sort that out afterwards. And that's it, and I think that's it for today.